called me to order, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is an open meeting of the Seward, Nebraska governing body. The city of Seward abides by the Nebraska Open Meetings Act in conducting business. A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is displayed on the north wall of this meeting room facility as required. The disclosure of meeting recording processes is posted in the meeting room. A participant sign sheet is available for use by any citizen addressing the council. Presenters shall approach the podium, state the name and address for the clerk's record, and are asked to limit remarks to five minutes. All remarks shall be directed to the mayor, who shall determine by whom any appropriate response shall be made. The city of reserves the right to adjust the order of items on this agenda if necessary and may elect to take action on any of the items listed. Please call the roll. Taylor. Here. Culterman. Here. Miller. Here. Strexen. Here. Tiny. Here. Worden. Here. Wilkin. Here. We have a quorum present. All right. Um, Maybe the longest consent agenda we've ever had. So if you have any questions, let us know. Um, otherwise, entertain a motion. I'll move the consent agenda. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. The motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we register your votes. We display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkie Taylor, Times, Culture Miller, uh, strikes and Morgan 7 0. All right, under public hearings, we have a Consideration of an ordinance to vacate the city right of way of road between the south right of way line of the vacated Midland Street and the south boundary line of the Midland Pacific Railway Town Site <laughs> Company's addition plat. Do I explain that, Tim? I would gladly. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is a request to vacate the very southern edge of South First Street. Uh, as shown on the Midland Pacific Railroad Townsite Company Edition Plat, dated July 15 of 1874. Uh, the uh, road never materialized, it is currently green space and has always been that way. The railroad depot was taken away years ago. Uh, the purpose for the request is a developer has purchased the property and they're looking to separate the current uh, residential site that's there from the remaining land for the purpose of affordable housing development of some sort. The area currently has no utilities in that right-of-way or in that street. All the other roads shown in that plat, with the exception of 2nd Street and Columbia and part of Depot Street have all been previously vacated. For some reason, this portion of uh, South First Street was missed. The only concern of the Planning Commission was the future development. Uh, housing have no basements, being so close to floodplain. Uh, we assured him that Administrator Butcher, as floodplain administrator, had already uh, seen the, the future plans and that he had recommended that the slabs be set at one foot above base flood elevation in that area. Uh, they, and they were okay with that. Uh, it was unanimously recommended 8 0 to vacate the remainder of First Street. Any questions or comments from the council? This is a public hearing, so I can open up the public comment portion of the public hearing. If anyone from the public wishes to comment on this item, please come forward at this time. Seeing no one wishing to comment, I will close the public comment portion of the public hearing return to the council for any further discussion. Or if you'd like to introduce the ordinance. I'll introduce the ordinance. All right. An ordinance to vacate the city right of way of road between the south right of way line of the vacated Midland Street and the south boundary line of the Midland Pacific Railway Townsite Company's Edition Plat, as here and after set forth, to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form, to provide for a time when this ordinance shall take effect. The ordinance has been read by a title and designated as Ordinance Number 2024-9, and the title is hereby approved. I need a motion to dispense with the statutory rule. 
I'll so move. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilton Kaler, Thomas Wilton Miller, strikes in Oregon 7 0. This is ordinance number 2024 9. Would anyone like to move that this ordinance be passed and adopted as read? So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question is your ordinance number 2024 9 be finally passed and adopted. Please register your vote. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilton Taylor, Tanya Sculpman Miller, strikes Morgan 7 0. I believe this is the only ordinance we have for this evening, so any one final motion to make the ordinance a part of the permanent record? Also move. Second. Motion and a second. Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilton Kaler, Tanya Sculpman Miller, strikes Morgan 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Item 2 is also a public hearing. This is a revision of the one and six year street improvement plan. <laughs> Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I printed out for you. It's hard on your screens to see so much detail. So uh, essentially, for at a glance, I printed out there's a uh, table that's two pages long. Uh, lists all the projects. So the very top four projects that are expected to be completed by the end of uh, this fiscal year. Then we have the next nine projects, which is what we project to be the projects we would complete fiscal year 2025, starting October 1. Uh, we'll talk in a little bit more detail about those. And then we have 39 projects listed, extending the bottom of the page, then also <coughs> on the next page. Essentially, this is another uh, additional six years past the first year of projects that we've identified. So we, uh, we haven't, we've added uh, very few projects uh, to the list from last year. Uh, effectively, we have been uh, uh, spending about, uh, bu budgeting about $4 million per year uh, for street projects. Uh, we anticipate that we need to cut that back. Our target in the coming years is uh, two and a half million. So effectively what we've done, except for necessary projects, new projects that get moved onto the list, we've essentially just kind of stretched out the same projects, but we've pushed back and done fewer per year and, and stretched that out. And we think that's probably responsible uh, regarding how much money we will have year in and year out. And of course, every year we can adjust that up or down uh, as, as necessary. Uh, so to start off with, and then the second handout here, there's two sides to it. The, the one side is the one-year projects, uh, one through nine. And then the back side is the uh, 39 projects uh, for that following six-year plan. Um, so. Um, uh, going through the projects in this next fiscal year, we have a number of changes uh, from uh, what was projected a year ago uh, for this year uh, to be constructed. Um, project number one is still a highway project. We do anticipate that being completed this calendar year, which then allows a couple of projects in fiscal year uh, that was projected for fiscal year 2026 to actually be built in this next year. Um, so going through the window in order, Project 2, that's East Hillcrest, and so that's from East Ridge down towards the Plum Creek Bridge. Uh, we do anticipate, had a meeting today uh, with the state on the uh, bridge project that is on target for being constructed in 2026, so we want to get East Hillcrest Project 2 completed in this next uh, fiscal year. Uh, moving down to the rail campus, so the lower <coughs> left of this uh, diagram, projects uh, three, four, and five. These are effectively three separate projects that we've kind of pushed all together in the same year. Uh, we do have uh, Kellen Myers Plum Creek uh, Seed project going forward. Building components have been delivered out near his lot at Pine and, and um, Worthman Boulevard. Uh, we also have some additional interest in the rail campus. So project three is effectively uh, three and four is effectively correcting the storm sewer at that intersection, Pine and, and uh, Worthman Boulevard, and then extending that Worthman Boulevard to uh, the edge of the rail campus that we currently own, up to, up to the Coranda property. Um, project five is uh, a storm sewer detention basin. By the terms of the PUD uh, development, the rail campus PUD, uh, for any lots under 
uh, 10 uh, acres in size, uh, the city provides storm sewer detention. And so this effectively uh, is, is created for that purpose. So with Kellen Myers development, this really becomes necessary. Also gets very difficult to add it at a later date um, after Riffin Boulevard's been constructed. So these all work together. Uh, working back to projects six and seven <coughs> in the middle of the city, uh, seven was uh, Robert Street overlay that was farther into our six year plan previous years. On the advice of the design engineer for project six, we moved that up and we're combining it with project six. Project six is extending the storm sewer. Uh, that NDOT will stub off at uh, Highway 15 at Bradford and Highway 15 at Roberts. And we'll, ex we'll extend with our project six storm sewer to Fifth Street. And that should correct the ponding all the way from Fifth Street all the way down to 8th, 9th, and 10th Street. And so that'll be complete. So we move both projects up, uh, project six by one year, because the highway project will be done faster, project seven by two years. And what project seven does is it creates um, a quantity of asphalt overlay uh, that makes it a biddable project by a, a good road contractor. If the project's too small, we, we tend to wind up, wind up with a smaller outfit, more suited to parking lots and things like that. And so it's in our best interest to make that a um, feasible project for a major contract or a major asphalt paving contract to take on. So the design of, um, of that storm sewer is that we're only going to be sawing apart pavement wide enough to put the storm sewer in and the inlets will fill that back up with concrete. We'll mill off the top two inches uh, full width uh, for the full uh, block and then we'll overlay that with two inches of asphalt. And this is a common practice that allows us to extend uh, the useful life of the road. So re complete reconstruction is quite expensive. And so this will uh, gain us another uh, 10 or 20 years on that uh, concrete base. So as long as the concrete base is not broken up, this is a um, efficient way to repave roads and those that uh, meet the, the qualifications. Um, I'll move on to the six-year projects. Anybody can interrupt at any time with any any questions they may they may have. Um, oh, did you, did you cover eight? I'm sorry. <coughs> Projects eight and nine. Yes, thank you. Project eight is a uh, is a new project that's River Street, so that's between 13th and 14th Street. This project here um, was. Um, uh, a new project that we've added, it's the addition of the sewer departments on the old uh, Napa site uh, in front of uh, Pack and Safe. And so that entire parcel now will become building with downspouts, garage roofs, pavement, sidewalk, uh, parking lot pavement. And so there'll be a, a, a lot more uh, storm water coming faster. Uh, down 13th Street to River Street and then exiting. And so because of that need for uh, uh, that project in particular, um, the storm sewer along River Street there from 13th to 14th is uh, potentially partially collapsed. Uh, it's not draining properly. It ponds up at the bottom of 13th Street. Bob's crew, several times per year, has to go out and remove the collected sediment. Uh, down in that corner. And so there's an obvious problem. So in the design, we'll figure out uh, exactly what needs to be done. And that might need to be upsizing the pipe. And then finally, Project 9 is up in the upper right corner. That's the uh, um, bike trail project. There's a section of uh, Plum Creek there uh, when there was a uh, levee of sorts uh, uh, built up years ago. It created a straightened out Plum Creek for a short stretch, created a 90 degree bank. And so what's happening is, is that the water and heavy rains is carving out that uh, bank. And it's actually encroaching, coming very close to the existing bike trail and several additional heavy rainstorms we haven't had for several years now uh, is likely to undermine that trail. So this project's designed to be an in-house project where Bob's crew uh, would set about paving 
Uh, so essentially it would be material cost. Uh, essentially their labor. The, his crew enjoys doing it. Uh, they patch roads all over. It's um, something that they uh, uh, undertake quite readily. Last year they did the alleys um, from Ash up to South Street, I believe it is, 4th to 5th and uh, 5th to 6th, the last couple of years. And so this would just be the next in the series. We try to get the, their crew essentially one project that's manageable in a number of weeks for the work. So that's the nine projects for the one year plan. So moving on to the, uh, the next uh, uh, diagram, next graphic, and the uh, six year plan projects. Um, effectively, these are uh, reordered slightly. Um, project, um, Project one is the Plum Creek Bridge. This is 100% um, federally funded, so this will not be a project where we anticipate incurring costs. Um, I just found out today we may have some traffic control signage that uh, will become the city's responsibility for um, the detour. But other than that, the city should not bear any costs. Uh, projects two and three are Pinewood. Uh, these projects, again, were separated we have joined them together here, so in the following year we plan to add storm sewer, add a detention basin, we project that would be in the golf course or several locations possible. And then projects beyond that, um, project four starts a uh, stretch of hill crest. So uh, if you see uh, the center uh, towards the uh, third of the way from the top of the page, projects four, eight, and 17, this had been a single project. Uh, we've split it up into successive years based on how the storm water flows essentially in segments, right, from high to low segments. And uh, essentially the project as a whole, 3,500 feet exceeded the amount that we would spend in a given year. Uh, so we broke it up and we broke it up in chunks that would be feasible to build that chunk and it would be standalone, the storm water would flow uh, properly at the end of the project. Effectively, we start Project 4, um, that's from Coulterman to East Ridge, and perhaps Columbia to East Ridge, because in that year, Plum Creek Bridge is expected to be out. The people that commute through that bridge, they'll be taking a different route. It should reduce the amount of traffic that comes to the intersection of Hillcrest and Columbia, so we think it's, that's a good section to segment to start with. And then we work our way back east uh, towards the highway. Um, other projects um, in that following fiscal year, Project 5, uh, Bob's crew this week filled um, the, um, the, the severe depression at the intersection of uh, 4th Street and East Seward. This would be the Project 5, uh, a one block long stretch from 4th Street to 5th Street. There's a storm sewer inlet at the intersection of 4th uh, and East Seward, and this would be the the test case for brick reconstruction. So with it being just um, a block off of the Courthouse Square, Historic Street, uh, Seward, um, a brick for a long stretch, we do anticipate this probably staying brick, and this would be uh, a way of gauging how well that project works. Obviously, we don't have to build a brick. Uh, we have a long way to go, uh, some planning, uh, some investigation with Omaha McCook, and streets that they have uh, repaved with brick. Um, then we would uh, consider, obviously we have a couple miles where the brick streets in the city, and many of them are starting to show its age and wear. They'll need replacement sometime in the um, uh, midterm future. And so we, an we anticipate needing to know what those costs are. And so there'll, there'll be, um, judgments coming up as to what to do with existing brick streets in terms of reconstruction. Uh, finally, I'll, I'll go to project six. This is Jackson Lindell, and this is a project that we have a signed contract for, for design. Uh, they've been working on, right now they're working on the design of work on the boulevard. We're gonna move on to the design of the storm sewer at Bradford and Roberts, uh, and then they'll follow up with um, Lindell and Jackson. So that is mostly a storm sewer project. Not many people live along that stretch. 
um, but the storm sewer uh, at grade runoff is really doing a lot of damage over time. Uh, we do anticipate that our uh, we'll have uh, road bond funds available in 2029, and so the projects um, between 2026 and 2028 are essentially funded as they are traditionally, which is a combination of federal and state funds that we get, as well as the general fund. And so some of these projects uh, later in the cycle from projects 23 onward uh, are candidates uh, for uh, bonding. So with that, um, there's a lot more detail here, um, but I'll certainly take any questions that we have. Well, we did take this to Planning Commission uh, last week, and they, they approved it uh, unanimously. Yes, ma'am. On, on the no, project date on the one-year plan, the River Street 14th to 13th, yes. is, there, is that storm sewer, does that tie back into the pump on South Penn Street? It does. It, it does, actually. So it runs, it, there's an outlet just if, at the end, so it's a little like an inverted T, and at the right end of that is essentially a, um, a flared end outlet, and then it runs overland. It runs under, uh, under the railroad tracks in a culvert, and then back around uh, to the levy pump station south end of 10th Street. So part of it is, uh, the portion we're showing here uh, in this fuchsia color is uh, buried storm sewer pipe, <coughs> And then the portion east of that to the levee pump station is overland as well, except for the culvert and the kind of the railroad tracks. Yeah, Rich. On number six, Mike, the, the storm sewer um, reconstruction would actually end up benefiting the area because all of that water that's currently eating away at our street mm -hmm. will be handled much safer with that sewer in place, and then the curving con um, concrete would be, have much greater life, is that correct? Yes, certainly. Uh, obviously, ponding of water through freeze-thaw free cycles is quite damaging. And so we anticipate with the NDOT Highway 15 project, the Bradford and Park Avenue storm sewer projects, and then this succeeding project should alleviate all, all of the ponding as our goal yeah. on Highway 15, so. Thank you for that. Sure. Any other questions or comments for Mike? We appreciate you presenting this evening. This is kind of a roadmap because obviously a lot of the big projects um, in the near future, uh, as you see with the current projects going on, can be fairly disruptive. And so we do want to not only give the council opportunity to, to build that roadmap, but also let the public have an idea of where future projects are going to, going to be. Um, I know, you know before I was mayor, I, it was, we had some controversy with the one and six year plan because some items were put on the one year plan that there was really no intention of, of doing those projects in one year. And it was more to appease people in certain groups or friends to be able to say, hey, it's on the one year plan. And it was really, you know, fool's gold or at best. And so that was one of the things that I felt was important that if we are going to do it, a project in the next year, then, then it could be in the one year plan. Otherwise, let's just be honest with people and say, okay, so we'll put it out somewhere in the next five years. We don't know exactly because a lot of it, like Mike said, is contingent on funding sources and what money is available when. And, and again, your priorities may change depending on other future developments that, that happen in the community. And so, uh, but I appreciate you taking the time to walk us through that. Uh, it is a public hearing, so I will take a moment to open up the public comment portion of the public hearing. If anyone wishes to comment on this item at this time, please come forward and do so. Seeing no one making a comment, I will close the public comment portion of the public hearing and return to the council for any additional discussion. I see we just take a simple motion. That's correct. Okay. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the vote. Voting in favor of Wilson Taylor, Tiny, Spokesman, Miller, Strikes, and Morgan, 7 0. Thank you, Mike. 
Under administrative items, items related to the wastewater treatment facility improvements project. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> um, I don't have agenda. Is this the surcharge yes. uh, project? Yep. Okay. Uh, so we do have a, a small project, eight, eight pages of the plan set here. We do have a set of specifications which I did not include in the packet. And then the second uh, attachment was a uh, cost estimate from the engineer. This is SEH, our design engineer, uh, for the wastewater treatment plant. The purpose of this project is effectively to preload soil. We are building the new wastewater treatment plant, the main tankage, the aeration tanks, in the current floodplain. And so this is immediately south of all the structures that are currently on South Columbia. And uh, we're allowed to do so. Um, but to avoid the expense of piling, where we're building tanks on concrete piles that are driven to the ground, potentially hundreds of piles at significant cost, um, the soils are good enough that we can preload that. So effectively, we build a 15, 16 foot tall mound of dirt. And the weight of that dirt over a six month period of time actually compresses that soil. Um, and then when the plant project started, they removed that soil. Uh, they'll, they'll use that soil elsewhere in the, the project site and effectively build that tank on that pad that had been preloaded. And so there's um, a manageable amount of settlement that occurs after in this process. And so it's really a cost saving uh, measure. Uh, piling will, will cost into the millions. The project is estimated to cost $695,000. Uh, of course, we don't know until it's bid. Uh, there is some storm sewer piping work, and so where the tankage is going, uh, there are some existing storm sewer pipes that have to be relocated. We're allowed by NDE to connect the storm sewer pipe into the wastewater trim plant outfall pipe. That pipe was constructed to the Big Blue River uh, to the west of the plant uh, in 2020. And so we're able to combine the uh, storm sewer with that. And so this project incorporates both that piping as well as the soil work uh, required. Uh, so this will be a substantial amount of trucking in soil. And so we're likely, due to um, the cost of trucking being the primary cost of, of, the, um, of the fill, um, we anticipate the closest source uh, being the one that's going to be the most effective and, and um, uh, win the bid. So potentially that's Hartman, uh, just outside of town on Matsky Highway, uh, close to the interstate. Uh, but all bidders are, are welcome. Uh, we do anticipate advertising starting next Wednesday for three weeks, June 26th, July 3rd, and July 10th. We haven't settled on a bid date. We could have it July 18th or the following Thursday, July 25th. And so that'll be determined by the, um, by the time we advertise, submit an advertisement on, on Friday. Uh, we do anticipate this to be work done uh, later in the year uh, when there is the equipment available. And um, the substantial completion date is likely to be into the next calendar year. So. We do need all the soil moved in a relatively short period of time, and then the, the six month period of time the clock starts. And they actually, um, they actually bury um, plastic components that stick up through the soil, and using survey instruments, they actually measure that sediment over time. And so there's a performance portion of this. And so this is uh, the project, of one of the first projects uh, to get our wastewater treatment plant upgrade project underway and um, ask for permission to uh, advertise for public bid. All right, thank you, Mike. Any questions or comments <coughs> from the council? Do we have a motion? Uh, yes, if you are ready. I would like to give a motion to advertise for public bid. Second. Second. Motion in a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, because you vote. Please display the votes. Voting in favor of Wilkin, Kaler, Tonyans, Fulkman, Miller, Strikes, and Morgan, 7 0. Thank you. And for item B, this is consideration of approval of a letter agreement with the Shemmer 
Associates for Engineering Services to support a floodplain permit application and temporary embankment surcharge project. Anything else you want to add to that? Yes, uh, certainly. So this, this is directly associated uh, with the project that we just asked to advertise. And to fill into the floodplain uh, requires, permissible, but it requires um, um, some work, some engineering work that's submitted to the floodplain administrator, who for Seward County is Greg. And city of Seward, not the county. Not the county, City of Seward. City of Seward. Okay. okay. And, um, and, and so part of that is a no rise certificate. So Shemmer Associates has done this work uh, in the state of Nebraska. Uh, they're very uh, experienced. They have done some preliminary work with the, uh, the model created by the, uh, available through the federal government. Uh, for this, uh, this section reach of uh, Plum Creek. So effectively, this is uh, the bridge at Highway 34 and then south to the bridge, I think it's at Fletcher. And we, to fill in this um, mound of soil, right, 15, 16 feet tall, we have to demonstrate that that action will not increase floodwaters uh, if an event, 100 year event were to come through. And so the, the anticipation is there'd be no rise with that modeling work. And so this uh, contract for $8,900 is for the engineering work required to do the modeling, uh, create documentation, submit that documentation for approval by the floodplain administrator. Thank you, Mike. Any questions or comments from the council? We'll entertain a motion to approve the letter agreement. Motion is Motion, is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting favor, Wilkin, Taylor, Tynes, Fulton, Miller, Tracy, Ford, and 7 0. All right, thank you, Mike. Item 2 compilation engagement letter with AMGL for preparation of the budget in the form prescribed by the State of Nebraska Budget Act for fiscal year 24-25. Greg. Yeah, this is our annual uh, agreement letter with AMGL. Uh, they prepare the specific and strict state budget forms. They also help review all of our cash statements and everything else to make sure that that's in compliance with our audit and matches numbers we received from our most recent audit as those cash flows work through the year. And so they do that and assist myself and finance director uh, Sydney Golden in that process. Um, they'll also do some of the projecting work for, um, they have measures and marks for cash reserves and things like that. So they'll fill that form in for us and just submit it to us so we can look at what we look on a basis of how we project the budget out as it's um, basically designed by the administration and projected out by the council. They'll do the final work and then that's the budget documents we'll ultimately put out in the paper We'll adopt on those last days. We'll also discuss them at the, the pink note card meeting if we have to go to that again this year. So they kind of get everything wrapped up in a ball and then they give it back to us. And it's with whatever changes you make on your fine tuning, they fine tune that final document, submit it back to us, and we send it on to the state auditor's office as the official budget. So uh, good assistance also gets us really prepped for audit so they can kind of see where we're at, what our statuses are. Big things we have, federal projects we're working on, if we need a single audit or something like that as well. So they're uh, keenly aware of those things. I can answer any other questions you have. How many years have they been our auditor grade? Oh, I think they've done it. Uh, we went out for bid with them my first year here. We did a five-year um, bid with them, and then we re-upped after five years for another additional five. What it, in, it is helpful, given their vast experience with other communities as well, that it's nice to have some context as how you're doing compared to others that they've done, because we don't necessarily know the ins and outs of everyone else's budget, obviously, because everyone has, to some extent, unique needs. And so them being able to, to tell us, as well as where we're fitting in, or is something that seems uh, maybe out of whack compared to another community and they kind of can give you they're not strict guidelines but at least an idea of where we fall and you know maybe we need to increase you know this fund or maybe we're you know, or we're okay 
it just is helpful to have someone with that level of expertise guide kind of guiding us through that project because or through the budget process. So, any other questions or comments? Otherwise, I entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? Seeing none, to register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kayla, Tanya, Coachman, Miller, Strice, and Morgan, 7 0. All right, item three update on the Wellness Center. Welcome, Joel. Hello, everyone. I'll just give you a little update on each section, uh, things that happened last week, uh, ongoing this week, and then what we expect next week, uh, and if we know of things to come. We do have our construction meeting tomorrow, so we'll be given lot more updates on the on the progress and hopefully see some areas a little bit more to, tomorrow as they get some more concrete up there it's easier to walk around in the muddy mess uh, the gym we'll start with that one first that is the last section to get the roof put on and that started last week if you've been by there you saw them get roof, the roof on they're over three-fourths done with that and so that is a good sign. The windows uh, between the section of the fitness center, hallway, and the pool, or not the pool, the gym, are, are not on there yet. That will be the last thing they do. So that's probably where they're going to get some rain in there yet. But the roof is almost done, should be done by the end of this week. And so once they can uh, do that, then everything should be sealed up. And that will be a big step and then weather will not uh, play as big a factor. So that will be going on, uh, and then as soon as that, uh, the roof gets put on, they will start working on slab prep uh, for, for the gym area, and that will be, that'll be a, obviously a big area to get ready for, and there are a lot more constraints on that. H2I, the company that is doing the flooring and all of the gym, all the, the basket apparatus at the at the roof uh, they have to come out and inspect things pretty thoroughly to make sure things are on grade so that everything is is correct and so there's a lot more steps to go through with that and um, but that will the slab prep will start happening uh, next week once they get um, once they get done with the roof part B which is the uh, fitness area a weight room, cardio, studio. The roof has been completed for a little bit. The underground rough-ins are continuing this week. Uh, for instance, what that is is uh, boxes get, getting placed in the ground that will have power and data for the cardio equipment that will be in there. Those will be placed in the ground uh, with outlets. So that th those sorts of things are happening this week. Next week, they will go to slab prep and getting ready to pour that area. And so uh, we'll find out tomorrow exactly how soon that pour is coming up, but it, on the schedule, it will be next week leading into the following week. So the slab prep will get going on that. Part C, the pool area. The pool dig did start last week. There's lots of dirt piled outside of there. It is about halfway done from what I've been told. Um, and again, we'll see that a little closer up tomorrow, but it is halfway done. And there's a lot of dirt, obviously, that needs to come out of there. So uh, that, the whole dig is scheduled to last uh, a couple more weeks. I'm assuming there's a lot more intricate things they have to do once they, they just get all of the big piles of dirt out. So, uh, but that is progressing nicely. And that was the nice thing with being able to get all the painting and all the rough ends in at the ceiling uh, we did not lose any time we just rearrange things so that it was good to see that going on looking forward to seeing that part uh, coming up they look uh, to be completed with the whole thing the week after the fourth uh, is what the schedule says for the pool dig and then they'll move on to all the other things in the pool area part D which is the locker room and classroom area, that uh, ceiling has been done for a little while. They poured the slab, the concrete floor in the locker room area last week. So that is in. 
and you can really start to see the spacing of everything where there's rough ends for where there are drains, pipes, anything like that. Um, so that happened last week. This week they're moving to pour the classroom areas. So each week there's going to be more pours of the floor. And as the building gets sealed, get some floors put in, and then they'll turn to each area with framing. And so that's right around the corner is framing those spots and we'll be able to see a lot of progress continue with that. So those areas continue to move well. It is kind of a, a good process. They have this down really well that, you know, that there's so many different groups working at one time together and they just keep moving around to different areas. Samson has done a fantastic job of coordinating all of that. So there's no downtime. There's something happening all the time. Uh, the boulevard uh, paving is supposed to start this week, but with the rain, that's probably going to be pushed a little bit as it looks the next couple days. Is, well, there, there's a chance of rain each day, so that will probably, I wouldn't be surprised if we hear tomorrow that a few days out, but the goal to have the boulevard completely done uh, the second week of July. Now again, that's something if it has to go an extra week that doesn't change anything with the project because that's you know separate piece that it's actually getting done much sooner than we originally anticipated so having that done even in july is a month to two months before we thought that boulevard was ever going to be done and then once that's done they'll move to the uh, south third of the parking lot and getting that done and then uh, then everything will will be continue to move pretty quick. But a lot of progress as you go by there. I feel bad on the hot days for those guys up on there. I can't imagine how hot it is on putting on a metal roof when it's like that, but that's what, they're working hard. They're there early in, in the morning when it's cooler. So that is what's the kind of the two week window. Thanks, Joel. Any questions? Any questions or comments from the council? appreciate the updates. Obviously, as the exterior gets finalized and done, and you won't be able to see as much from the outside of what's going on when they right. start focusing on the interior. So these updates will be even more valuable just so people kind of will know that there is going activity going on even if you can't see it from, from the road. So, all right, with that, thank you, Joel. We'll go on to item four, update on the exterior paint design for the downtown water tower. Great. Yeah, um, we're pretty close. I think the final design I sent off to the mayor the other day. Um, when we ran into a snafu. We were on a call with the engineering team and the of our iron team and the paint team. It's myself, Brent Cole, and Mike. And we were discussing and looking at the design, which you haven't seen yet. But we realized it hadn't been applied in 3D. That because of some of the nature of some of the stuff as it comes down, it wasn't, it was done in flat, and so we went, there's no way for those two to connect once you do it in 3D. Um, the artist we've been working with is Seth Boggs, who's kind of designed this idea. And so we had to take it back to Seth and say, Seth, can you somehow figure out how to get this into 3D? And he did figure out a way to do it in animation, so you can see it go through. And then he literally laid it out so it's, you can take it out as a piece of paper, cut it out and roll it around, and you can see it as a model. So we just need to finalize a few of those ideas. and you pass around the model? Well, we were going to build you one tonight, but we weren't <laughs> sure. We, we talked about it with some toilet paper rolls and an onion, <laughs> an onion at the top. But, I like it. I like uh, it. Patriotic theme, a uh, few different shades of uh, red, white, and blue, not just a standard royal and, and red and white. It'll have some shading and some other things that come along with it. So look for that in your emails probably to solicit some feedback on that one. Uh, once we finalize uh, the, the rendering with Seth. So the hard part for us also is if you kept up with the news, Seth's been pretty busy between doing some work out in Utica and traveling into Alaska and some other things. So that during the time we've needed him, he's been very gracious to, to give his time to help us out on that. So hopefully we'll have something shortly in the next probably three to five days. And we'll submit that out to you for your feedback, and then we'll do some unveiling and get going on it. So. There we go. Any questions on that? All right. We have the update on the Highway 15 construction. 
Uh, they were out today doing the final pours for the portion I could see. I checked with Mike. Um, did they make it, or Bob, did they make it all the way up? To, um, to they did the east sewer. Yeah, we got the east sewer. Okay. You mean sewer, not east sewer. I'm sorry, well, sewer chief. We're paving over by east sewer, no problem. <laughs> I saw they got to Seward and they had done some of the turnaround parts in the turn lanes on 34, but it seemed like it slowed down a little bit. Their goal to have everything ready by the 4th of July is they basically need to be done pouring by the end of this week, correct Mike? Right. So that gives them enough time to get the seven day cure in so that they can have full traffic over the top of that. And so they're going to work diligently over the next three days to finish up what framing they need to do if it's not already out there for the next pours up through. Uh, Bradford um, but that's where we're at and then the hope is is they'll let it sit for seven days uh, and then right before that last day they're gonna literally pull everything up and move it off to the side or pull it all out so um, and then they'll be back the week after the 4th of July and back at it uh, and probably unless there's some detail work that they want to do they're probably mobilize down to park and start down there so that's the update. I just remind people if anybody's watching, listening, or anything else, is continue to use due caution and diligence over the next week or two. We saw people today, because they had it opened up for the concrete trucks to come up, somebody just drove right up through there. And then I saw them waving and yelling, and then they looked like they were going to turn right into the fresh concrete. And I was just like, oh, goodness. <laughs> but there's a lot of trucks going up in there because there's a lot of concrete delay. And so. People have to be careful, and if it says do not enter in big red letters and road clothes and all that stuff, that's what that means. Stay away from it. So, I can answer any other questions you have about the project, but things seem to be on time. Hopefully, the weather will be mindful for us. And then the vast majority of barricades and sign signage and stuff will probably be temporarily at least removed for the fourth. Yeah, I think most of it they're going to pick up and take off yeah. entirely. Uh, some of the, the yeah, some of the notation will be for the second street will remain. So some of the boards and signs that denote the detour, they'll keep those. Um, but so. All right. Thank you, Greg. Uh, City administrator's report. Um, administrator's reports in there. Continue to work with budgets today. We uh, cleaned up most of the CIPs. Got final numbers on those things. Um, yeah, I can answer any questions. It's mostly just projects, projects, projects at this point because we're knee deep in the construction season. The Civic Center renovation is underway. If you saw the photos that are posted online, um, myself, Aaron Wiseman, uh, members of the Civic Center Commission, we did a walkthrough and looked at some of the specifics of things they had identified. When you get into those buildings and they're that old, you find things you never knew were in there. And so different pilings and different supports that we just didn't think were there, but nothing that's going to be uh, strictly detrimental to the main purpose and goal of the project, which again is ADA access and things like that. So I feel really comfortable with the plan to move forward on that one, but uh, very interesting to see it when it's all opened up and gutted like that. So um, we'll continue to work on that. I think at some point here shortly, you're going to start seeing, and we'll communicate with SECDP, we'll start moving into the newer portion of the building to get the fire suppression uh, put into that because that was one of the phase one projects and so I think SCCDP while they're doing that will just vacate the building temporarily so but Aaron's over there every morning uh, working with BIC the contractor and also communicating with SCCDP about status and stuff like that um, also working with BNSF on our trail project and our levy at the same time uh, gracious thanks to Matt uh, Streisen and Hughes Brothers went out there and looked at the stop logs. If you're familiar, the stop logs are the portion that uh, where the BNSF railroad comes in from the north, northwest, enters in next to uh, Hughes Brothers. That comes through the levee. There are what we call stop logs in there, concrete uh, bases with that you literally just put logs in, sandbag up, uh, and use tarps to kind of protect that area and make it water sealed. Um, in 2019, we did not activate those, um, but uh, we were ready to do so. Um, and so some of the sills and other things on that have degraded over time or been damaged by BNSF because the tracks have lowered and so they've cut them down and other things. And 
so we worked with Hughes Brothers and BNSF to kind of come up with a plan um, to fix that up. And in the meantime, we also had the roadmaster from Ravenna out there. So we pulled his ear about our trail project and crossings and uh, maybe doing some, some trading back and forth on some switches and other things that maybe would allow for more safety for BNSF, eliminate some things that they don't like to see if they're not in use and maybe get our crossings for, because that's the big holdup right now, is getting our federal trail project up, is getting BNSF to find two that they're willing to give up. And so we think that switch might be something that they would be willing to trade off. So we're working on that. So lots of fun things going on, but busy, 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 busy. Any questions or comments for Greg? Yeah, the only thing I would add is that the city meeting of the 4th of July is on Thursday at 3. Yes, right, here. here in this room. So if anybody wants to come, they're welcome to come. I will not miss the thing here, so you get Uncle Clark all by yourself. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look forward to it. With that, is there a motion to accept the report? Move to accept the report. Second. Motion and a second. To register your vote. <coughs> Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wolf and Kayla, Tanya, Coulter, and Miller, Streisand, Morgan, and Seven Zero. All right, is there any future requests for council agenda items or administrative action? We have upcoming events. Welcome. Thank you. I'll be very brief. Just a couple updates. Uh, we're preparing for the 4th of July, um, especially on the Grand Parade coming up. You can keep up to date on all the activities going on on the 4th of July website. That's july4th.com and the Facebook page. And then besides that, there are lots of community festivals coming up across Seward County in our communities. So we encourage you to travel throughout the county this summer to support our sister communities. Please keep updated on these upcoming events through the Blue River Buzz, which is our weekly uh, newsletter. If you're not signed up, then we can get you registered. That's all I have. All right, thank you. And with that, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion a second. To rest your vote. Please display the vote. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. See you.